Hey everyone, ready for a deep dive? Today we're exploring Seeking the Holy Spirit. Ooh, that's a good one. Picture this. You're just relaxing, right? Mm -hmm. Enjoying a peaceful morning. Everything's calm. Okay, yeah. And then, bam! Yeah. You're arrested. Oh, wow. Facing torture. Oh, no. And then they give you this horrific choice. Uh-huh. Renounce Jesus or suffer unimaginable pain. Intense. Right. Huh. And Piper, he doesn't just throw that out there for shock value. Yeah. He uses it to get us thinking. Like, huh? how do we prepare ourselves spiritually for trials we can't even fathom? That's a good question. It's like, how do we train for a spiritual marathon when we have no idea what the course is going to be like? Uh, that makes sense. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Piper points us to this passage, 1 Peter 4.1-14. It talks about how the Spirit empowers us during tough times. Right. You know, like how he gives us the strength to endure. Uh-huh. And he uses the story of Corey Ten Boom. Have you heard of her? Yeah, she helped Jewish people escape the Nazis, right? Exactly. And she ended up in a concentration camp herself. Wow. But before all that, her father gave her this amazing advice. He said, God's strength will come just in time. Wow, that's powerful. Chills, right? It's like a promise that we're never truly alone in our struggles. Yeah. And Piper's point is that this promise applies to all kinds of suffering, not just like persecution. Oh, okay. So we're talking illness, grief, job loss, relationship struggles, you know. The everyday stuff, too. Anything that tests our faith. Yeah, that makes sense. And to help us understand how the Spirit works in us during these trials, Piper lays out seven key ways. Seven. Okay, we might need to break this down. Yeah, for sure. We could probably spend a whole deep dive on each one. Probably. But let's focus on a couple that really jump out. Sounds good. Which ones are you thinking? Well, the idea of the Spirit bringing truth to mind during yeah. trials, I think that's huge. Yeah, I can see that. It's like, he cuts through all the confusion and doubt. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, you remember a specific verse or a time when God came through for you. The light bulb moment. Exactly. Yeah. Or maybe it's just a sudden sense of clarity. Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, this is what I need to do. Okay. It's like having a personal GPS guiding you through a fog. I like that. So what about you? What's standing out to you? Hmm. Well, this one's a little more, I don't know, complex. But Piper talks about the Spirit helping us experience glory. Experience glory. Yeah, he calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of glory, which means he can actually allow us to, like, get a taste of heaven. Whoa, hold on. So even when we're going through something terrible, the Holy Spirit can help us see beyond that. Exactly. Like, yeah. it's not that the pain disappears, but it's like you're suddenly standing on higher ground. I see. And you can see things from a different angle. That's amazing. It makes you wonder, though, if the Holy Spirit is this powerful, why do we still struggle so much? That's a great question. And it actually leads perfectly into the next part of Piper's sermon. Oh. Yeah. He shifts gears and asks, how do we actively seek the Holy Spirit? Seek the Holy Spirit. Yeah, not like a one-time thing, but like an ongoing pursuit. Interesting. And he gives us four specific ways to do it. Okay, I'm definitely intrigued. Let's hear it. The first one is meditation. And I don't mean like emptying your mind or chanting. Gotcha. It's about dwelling on God's word. You know, letting it really soak in. Like not just reading it, but absorbing it. Exactly. Like chewing on it, letting it change us from the inside out. Okay, so it's about truly engaging with scripture. Uh-huh. Allowing it to speak to us on a deeper level. Yes. And that leads us to belief. Okay, so what about belief? It's about actively accepting and trusting the truths that we encounter in scripture. So it's like we're not just reading the words, but we're actually believing them. Exactly. We're cultivating faith, you yeah. know. Believing that what God says is true and that he's going to do what he promises. Okay, that makes sense. But it sounds like there's more to it than just believing, right? You're right. Belief leads to obedience. Obedience. It's about putting that faith into action. We're not just hearers of the word, but doers. So it's like, we're not just talking the talk. We're actually walking the walk. Exactly. Living out our faith. Even when it's hard. Even when we don't feel like it. Exactly. Wow. It sounds like seeking the Holy Spirit is way more active than I thought. Oh, absolutely. And that brings us to the final element, desire. Desire. Yeah. Piper encourages us to cultivate a deep longing for the Holy Spirit, like a thirst for Him. So it's like saying, God, I want more of you. Mm. I want to experience mm -hmm. your presence and power in my life. Precisely. It's not just settling for like a surface level relationship but yearning for something deeper. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So why is all this so important? What happens if we don't actively seek the Holy Spirit? 
Well, Piper doesn't sugarcoat it. He gives this pretty stark list of what we miss out on without the spirit's work. Oh, wow. Like what? Okay, so no new birth. No confession of Christ's lordship. No victory over sin. Okay, yeah, those are pretty major. Right. And no progress in becoming more like Christ. Oh, wow. No spiritual wisdom, no spiritual gifts, and no resurrection from the dead. Wow, okay. That's a powerful reminder that we need the Holy Spirit every step of the way. Exactly. And remember that intense scenario Piper started with. The one where you're facing torture. Yeah, that one. The whole point is that seeking the Holy Spirit now, W, prepares us for whatever might come our way. Like we're building up spiritual muscles. Exactly. So even though we don't know what specific trials we might face, we can be confident that the Spirit will be there to help us through them. Exactly. And there's actually more to unpack here. Piper talks about how all believers have the Holy Spirit, but not all are filled with the Spirit. That's interesting. So it's like we have access to this incredible power source, right. but we're not always plugged in. Exactly. So how do we tap into that power? How do we experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit? I think that's a question for our next deep dive. I agree. It sounds like we have a lot more to explore. We do. Okay. So we're back. We just had this intense deep dive into John Piper's sermon on seeking the Holy Spirit. We talked about how the Spirit works in us especially during trials. Right, like how he brings truth to mind and how we can even get glimpses of eternal glory. Exactly. And then there were those four key ways to actively seek the Holy Spirit. Meditation, belief, obedience, and desire, right? Got it. And we talked about needing to dig a little deeper into those. Especially that plugged in experience with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So where should we start? Well, let's go back to meditation for a minute. Piper really emphasizes that connection between the Spirit and God's Word. Oh yeah, he even quotes Jesus from John 6.63. The one where Jesus says, It is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are Spirit and life. That's the one. So it's not just about reading the words on the page, but like letting them transform us. You got it. And Piper actually takes it a step further. He connects Ephesians 5.1 eat, which says to be filled with the Spirit, to Colossians 3.1 scene. Which says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Oh, wow. I never noticed that connection before. Yeah. So he's basically saying that letting scripture really take root in us. Is how we experience the Holy Spirit more fully. Okay, that makes so much sense. So mm -hmm. if we want to be full of the Spirit, we need to pursue the fullness of God's word. That's it. Okay, that leads us to belief, right? What does Piper say about that? Well, he quotes Paul from Galatians 3.5 asking, does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? So it sounds like the Holy Spirit really works powerfully in us as we believe what we hear in God's Word. Right. Piper brings up examples like Stephen, who was full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Barnabas, who was described as a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. Okay, so these are like examples of how faith and the Spirit go hand in hand. Exactly. And then Galatians 3.14 says we receive the promised Spirit through faith. Exactly. It's all connected. So we have meditation leading to belief. But then there's that obedience piece. How does that fit in? Hmm. That's a good one. Piper actually brings up that conversation between Jesus and one of the disciples in John 14. Oh, yeah. Where the disciple asks, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? That's it. And Jesus replies, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. So obedience is like showing love for Christ. And that opens us up to experiencing the Trinity's presence even more in our lives. I see. So we're not just hearing and believing, but we're living it out. Our actions are matching up with our beliefs. Exactly. So it's not just about what we think or believe, but about how we actually live our lives. Yeah, and that takes us to desire, that longing for the Holy Spirit that Piper talked about. Right, and he uses that image from John 7 and 3, 7, where Jesus says, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Now this he said about the Spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. Yes. It's like a thirst, a deep yearning for more of the Spirit's presence and power. And I love how Piper pulls in some imagery from the Psalms too, like in Psalm 42.1 and 2. Where it says, As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. That's the one. 
Or how about Psalm 63.1? Which says, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So powerful. Those verses paint such a vivid picture of just like that deep desire for God. Yeah, it's not passive. It's like this wholehearted pursuit. Yeah. But what about people who might say, Hold on, don't all believers already have the Holy Spirit? Oh, Piper definitely addresses that. He says, yes, all believers have the Holy Spirit, just like we have faith. But then he adds, what? and Jesus says, oh, you of little faith. Ooh, good point. So it's not just about having the Spirit, but experiencing the fullness of his power. Exactly. It's about being filled with the Spirit, being empowered by him, walking in step with him. Okay, so we've covered those four ways to seek the Holy Spirit. And it seems like this is about going deeper and experiencing more of God's presence and power in our lives. Right. But before we move on, can we circle back to something we talked about earlier? Sure. What's that? That idea that the Holy Spirit can help us experience glimpses of eternal glory even while we're suffering. Yeah, I think that's such a powerful concept. Me too. It's just hard to grasp sometimes. What does that actually look like in our lives? Well, I think Piper's point is that the Holy Spirit can shift our perspective. So it's not about denying the pain or pretending everything's okay, but it's about acknowledging the reality of suffering, but also remembering that this world isn't all there is. Yes. It's like when you're standing on a mountaintop and you can see for miles in every direction. Oh, I like that. Your problems might still be there, but they seem smaller, less significant. It's like the Holy Spirit's lifting us up, giving us a better view of God's perspective and our fears and worries. Start to fade in comparison to the vastness of God's love mm -hmm. and the eternal glory that awaits us. Exactly, and that perspective shift, it can have a huge impact on how we live. Totally. Yeah. When we focus on the eternal, our priorities start to change. Yeah, we care less about the fleeting stuff of this world and more about love, joy, peace, kindness, faithfulness, all those things that really matter, the things that reflect God's character. That's it. And that's where the Holy Spirit helps us. He empowers us to live in a way that reflects the glory we've seen. To love others even when it's hard, to forgive freely, to keep going through challenges. To shine God's light even when the world feels dark. So it's not about escaping reality. It's about letting the Holy Spirit transform us from the inside out. Yeah, to become more like Jesus. And that's something we can only do through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's right. This is so much bigger than just like a theological concept. It's about experiencing the presence of God. Right. And I love how Piper brings it all back around to being prepared for trials. Right, like that intense scenario he started with. Facing persecution and having to choose between denying Christ or suffering. Yeah. The point is that seeking the Holy Spirit, now, now, W, prepares us for whatever might come our way. Because we never know what specific trials we might face. But we can be sure that the Spirit will be there to help us. And that brings us back to those seven ways the Holy Spirit works in us during trials. We talked about truth and experiencing glory. But there are five more we haven't even touched on. I know, we could talk for another hour about them. I think we need another deep dive. Sounds good to me. Let's keep going. Okay, so we're back and ready to keep going with this whole idea of seeking the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it feels like we could talk about this forever. I know, we've covered so much ground already, but it's like we're just getting started. It's true. There's so much to unpack. It's like peeling back layers of an onion. And speaking of going deeper, remember those seven ways the Holy Spirit works in us, especially during trials. Oh yeah, we talked about truth and experiencing glory. But there are five more, right? Five more. It's like we have this whole spiritual toolbox oh. full of different ways the Spirit helps us navigate those tough times. I like that. A spiritual toolbox. So which tool are we picking up next? Well, let's talk about sustaining love. Piper talks about this as the Spirit helping us experience like the beauty and power and love of Christ so deeply that he becomes our like our ultimate satisfaction. It's like in those moments when you feel God's presence so strongly that nothing else matters. Exactly. The pain might still be there, but it's like something bigger overshadows it. The Holy Spirit helps us focus on what really matters, even when everything feels like it's falling apart. Yeah, he reminds us that God's with us. He loves us yeah. and he's never gonna leave us. It's like that image of having an anchor in the middle of a storm something to hold on to. Exactly. And this love, it's not just a passive thing either. It gives us the strength to love others. Even when they're hard to love. Especially then. And it gives us the strength to forgive. Even when we've been hurt. Even when we've been hurt deeply. So it's like this outward expression of 
the love we're receiving from God. Exactly. Okay, what's next in our toolbox? Well, this one's important for those times when we're doubting ourselves. It's overcoming doubts. Okay. Piper describes this as the spirit assuring us of our adoption as God's children. Like being welcomed into a loving family, knowing you're cherished no matter what. Yeah, that kind of unshakable confidence, even when the world is throwing its worst at us. It's like having an inner strength that nothing can touch. Exactly. So what else do we have? This next one might seem a little surprising. It's the spirit speaking for Christ. Wait, so even in the midst of our trials, we can be witnesses for Christ. That's Piper's point. He says, if we have the opportunity to share our faith during those tough times, the Spirit will give us the words to say. And that's powerful, right? When people see us going through hardship, but with faith and grace. It speaks volumes. It becomes a testimony to how the Spirit is working in us. It's like our lives become living proof of God's faithfulness. Exactly. Okay, so what's the last one? What's the last tool in our spiritual toolbox? This one's pretty amazing. It's the Spirit giving himself giving himself yeah paper describes it as like experiencing the father's care the son's love and the spirit's fellowship all at once wow that's intense it's like the trinity wrapping you in a blanket of comfort it's the ultimate intimacy with god so we've gone through all seven but honestly sometimes this all feels a little hard to grasp like how do we actually experience this stuff in our everyday lives that's a good point it's easy to get caught up in the busyness of life and lose sight of the Spirit's work. That's why those four ways of seeking the Holy Spirit that we talked about are so important. Right. Meditation, belief, obedience, and desire. Those are like our spiritual practices, intentional ways to cultivate our relationship with the Spirit. So we're not just waiting for a miracle to happen, we're actively pursuing the Spirit. Exactly. It's about consistently spending time in God's Word, letting it soak in. It's about believing His promises, obeying His commands, and cultivating a deep desire for more of Him. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's the one thing you hope our listeners take away? What's the key message? I think the most important thing is that seeking the Holy Spirit is an active pursuit. It's a journey. It's about drawing closer to God, opening ourselves up to His presence and power. And it's a journey that's available to every single one of us. And remember, we don't have to figure it all out on our own. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Our guide, our comforter, he's with us every step of the way. Leading us deeper into God's love. So if you're feeling lost or discouraged or overwhelmed, remember that the Holy Spirit is there. Waiting to fill you with strength and peace. And to close, I want to leave you with the same question Piper posed in his sermon. If the Holy Spirit empowers us to face any trial, What's holding you back from seeking him fully today? It's something worth thinking about. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive, everyone. 